Okay, today's project is to fix up this old Richards Wilcox woodworking vise. I got this uh, locally from a gentleman on Craigslist and I'm pretty excited. I've never had a woodworking vise before. Um, this is a pretty good size one. Uh, it's about 10 and a half inches across, if I remember correctly. Um, so it's a good size and it's deceptively heavy. But then again, most old vices are pretty heavy. All right, so first things first, I'm gonna disassemble this as best I can. And then once I've got it into, uh, broken down into its components, we'll put it, um, we'll give it a bath, clean it up, and probably give it a dunk in evaporust to clean it up. And then from there, we can decide if we're gonna paint it or leave it looking raw. Stick around, should be a fun project. All right, first things first, I've got some rusty fasteners. Here's a couple here. There's actually a pin right here that is, oh, sorry, focus. Which is that pin right there, and that is what engages um, these two dogs here, or these two ears on this fancy split nut contraption that um, is part of the quick release. And so I want to get that out. And then I have, there's a couple of um, circlips on the end of each of the uh, bars here. There's one on the end of each. So I'm going to uh, soak all those things with, you guessed it, WD-40. Alright, so I'll let that sit for a little while and do its thing and we'll start working on taking it apart. Okay, I don't really know how to take one of these apart because I've never done it. Uh, but I'm going to start at the front and work my way back. Um, I'll, let's do the easiest thing first. There. I feel better already. I feel like I've already accomplished a lot. You know, like when you're reading a book and the first chapter is really short and you're like, man, this book is going to fly by. Okay, so I've got these two large hex nuts here and they're an inch and a sixteenth. So I've got that, and then I'm going to take a rag and put that over the bar. And I'm going to use a pair of channel locks just to try to get a bit of a grip on that so I can try to undo this hex knot. And the rag is there just to prevent me from putting any marks on the bar. Yeah, it's probably wishful thinking. All right, I'm going to try a rubber glove, see if I get better gription with the palm of the rubber glove. Uh, no. <laughs> nope. I really, really do not want to put a pipe wrench on this. So I just tried this other one, and this one is like finger tight. All right, one down, one to go. I think what I'm going to do is go get my pipe wrench and then do the glove thing again on there just because I really don't want to put any marks in these, uh, these bars because they have to travel through um, as this clamps. It needs to be smooth through here or it'll catch on stuff and I just don't want to put marks in it. All right, so I got my pipe wrench and I very ginger carefully 
put it on there and was able to get this going and it didn't leave much marks. So I'm happy with that. It mostly just scratched the rust uh, in the middle here. So I'm okay with that. All right, that's two nuts off. So let's see here. Now I'm gonna pull this out. Okay, so now I've taken the two guide bars out and these are kept in place by a couple of circlips on the end of this yoke. Um, so now I'm gonna take these out, I think, yep. Sorry. Slide, slide that down. Oh, well, there's one, and there's two. And here's that cast yoke. I don't know if that's what it's called. That's what I'm gonna call it. Looks nice. Rusty, but nice. And then here are here are the guide bars, and you can kind of see. If this would focus, thank you. There's a little circlip on that end. And then here's the threaded end where that nut goes on the front. That's got some rust on it. They both do. And now that leaves the two jaws and the main screw along with the uh, fancy uh, quick release nut. So my hands are super gross, so let me get cleaned up and I'll bring you in for a closer look. Okay, so I'm gonna back the screw out all the way and uh, that'll separate it from the, uh, that'll separate the dynamic jaw and the main screw from the uh, static jaw and the quick release nut. Okay. So this is a pretty neat system here. This quick release. It, uh, so it's got, a, it's got a counterweight on this side. So as you turn the lead screw one direction, it pulls down and it engages or the uh, what am I trying to say? These threads engage onto the main screw. And then when you rotate it in reverse, it rotates in the other way. And this part hinges and it opens up like this and it disengages from the threads on the lead screw. And that way you can just pull the dynamic jaw straight out. So you don't actually unwind the screw the whole way out. You just, uh, you don't have to do like a turn. This will disengage and you can pull it right out. So this looks to be cast brass or bronze, which is pretty cool. Um, it has a yellowy color to it. You guys probably can't tell just on the video. Um, but once I get this cleaned up, it'll look probably quite different. It says 74F, it's casted, cast into the, uh, the part there. The threads on this look really good, they're not too worn. It's pretty gross. All right. Now the rest of this, I think this will fit in my bucket for the evaporust bath. I'm not sure about this. What I may do is, um, I've got like a five gallon 
bucket I'm going to use. I can set this in the bucket with the evaporust and this part and these nuts, the yolk on the back, and the two main bars there. So all this stuff is going to get uh, a nice bath in evaporust and then we'll start uh, cleaning it up. I like to scrub my parts um, with a, a degreaser before I put them in with the evaporust. It just keeps grease and grime out of the mix so um, I get better life out of the evaporust. So all I've got here is a green scotch Bright pad, just a scuff pad, and I've sprayed my parts, my small parts, with some simple green, and I'm just gonna scrub to remove a little bit of the grease and some of the rust, loosen up some of the rust so it makes it a little bit easier on the evapor rust. So they don't have to soak quite as long. I won't show you this whole process. This is probably gonna be an hour of just scrubbing, so. Put some tunes on, have myself a good time. How am I gonna turn the camera off now? All right, I've had the uh, vice parts soaking in my bucket of evaporust for a couple days now, so let's take it out and see how stuff looks. These main bars are obviously too long for the bucket, but you can see there's a line where they were in the in the evaporust and where they were not. And they look much better because this uh, threaded section was actually pretty rusty and it's cleaned up pretty well. There's still a little bit of rust scale, but it flakes off just with my fingers, so that's good. So this was not fully submerged in the evaporust either, um, but you can see there's a clear line, maybe you can see, here, where this was submerged and up here was not. So. What I'd like to do is so this is the, you know, the dynamic jaw, the front. This was fully submerged, so this is good. The main screw was not, but again, I'm not worried about that. I can get in there with a wire wheel. That's, it's too long. I don't have a container that it would submerge in that would be appropriately sized for it. So I'm not gonna worry about that. This, it, with the main body, um, the top half was submerged the bottom half, or the back half, I should say, sorry, uh, was not. So I'm gonna put this back in for a while to get the other half, the back half in there. So we'll set that aside for now. And I wanna fish out the other small parts. So there are the two nuts, they look good. The yolk thing, and then the split nut. And I was wrong, I thought this was cast brass or bronze, just because of the color it had, but you can clearly see that it is not that. So what I'm gonna do is put this back of the bucket the other way. Like so. And let that sit for, oh, well, probably another day or two. And while that is doing that, I'm gonna take these over to my bench grinder with a wire wheel and just polish them up a little bit. Well, first I'm gonna rinse them because they're um, 
they still have, they're pretty wet. So I'll rinse them off, dry them real quick, and take them over to the bench grinder. I'm actually going to scrub these first with a scotch Brite pad just to kind of loosen up some of that scale before I rinse them. So the evapo rust turns like rust to this like dark gray kind of scale and you just rub it off with a an abrasive pad like the back like the green side of a sponge or a, a wire brush if you have one. I have this scratch pad here so I'm going to use that. So once I'm done with all this, I'm just gonna hose them off with a hose. So I'll, uh, I'll bring you guys back when these are all cleaned up. So I'm just going through, and it's kinda hard to tell on camera here, but there's some uh, dark um, schmutz kinda in the corners and stuff. So I'm just taking a, uh, a wire brush and cleaning it, cleaning it up. You can kind of see the see what's much darker down here in the corners. The casting and kind of it's hard to tell because of the shadow. But anyways, I'm gonna spend 20 minutes and scrub, and I won't bother showing you that. Okay, I've got this cleaned up as much as I want, and it's got no oil or anything on it, and just in the 25 minutes I've been working on it. I'm already seeing some flash rusting in here So I'm gonna spray this down with some WD-40 just to protect it from rust um, Until I can decide if I'm going to paint it or oil it Okay, I fished the main body out of the evapo rust bucket and I'm just gonna scrub it down And it looks pretty good so just like all the other parts, I'm going to scrub this just to loosen up any of that kind of dark gray scale that's left behind in place of the rest. And then I'll hose it off with the garden hose and then I'll oil it or just spray it down with WD-40. So now I'm going to work on cleaning up the, uh, the main uh, guide bars here. Uh, I'm just going to hit them. I've got a wire wheel on my grinder, and we'll just clean them up. So now that these parts have been, you know, they've had their bath in evapor rust, and they've come out, they are a much lighter color than I would like. The evapor rust kind of it strips all of the the oils out of the metals as well, so it has a much lighter 
a more pewter color than like a nice dark oiled uh, cast iron piece would typically have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to coat these cast parts with boiled linseed oil. Uh, just to, I'm just going to wipe them down. I've got a rag and I'll coat them nicely. And I'm going to bake them in the oven at like 250 degrees for a couple hours. And that will kind of cure the linseed oil, almost like you're seasoning like a cast iron skillet or something. Um, and that will, it'll finish these parts with a, a little bit more, what am I trying to say? A better, it'll be a better wearing finish than just like WD-40 or 3-in-1 oil. Um, it'll be a little more durable. And then the boiled linseed oil will be a darker, it'll give it a darker finish after it's been uh, baked. So I'm going to wipe these down and throw them in the oven for a couple hours and hopefully uh, don't stink up the house because that would stink. <laughs> See what I did there? Okay, we're done. We're ready to put it back together once and for all. All the parts have been in the oven. They baked for, well, they were in there for about two hours at 250 degrees and the uh, the finish is pretty good. The parts are still warm a little bit. They've been out of the oven for a little while now. Um, I probably put a little bit too much of the boiled linseed oil on there. Uh, there were some spots where I had a little bit of pooling and you, ha you get a little bit of like an amber um, shiny, sticky, tacky sort of thing. So I just wiped, wiped that off with a rag. And I'm happy with the finish. Um, it's, it's not oily, but it's not dry. Um, and it has a little bit darker color to it than it did um, before I put it in the oven. So I'm happy with it. And you can still put, you know, a WD-40 on it or whatever other oil finish you want to put on there if you want to put gun oil or whatever. Um, so let's put this back together. If I can remember how. Alright, so this is the guide or the yoke, I don't know, yoke I'm calling it. There's the guide bars. So here again is the the split nut. So this goes on and depending on which way you turn engages or disengages. Pretty clever. And so that's gonna go, let's see, that's gonna go right in here. Once it's put back together, I'll show you, I'll give you an overview. It's kind of hard to get the camera angle good. I rotate. So you want to have this set up this way. So the there's a little bar here that this little nub catches on. And when it rotates, that nub hits that bar and it forces this out. So that's going to go right down in there. And we'll get this started. So I'm just holding that um, split nut open with my thumb so I can slide that through there. Okay.
put our nuts back on. We're just gonna hand tighten these in case I've disassembled it incorrectly. Because, you know, I would do that. So it's binding a little bit. Uh, this should allow the uh, this to slide more freely. So these three holes are not perfectly straight. Um, the middle hole is a little bit off center. So depending on which way you put this up or down, you change whether the, the lead screw is pitched one way or the other and it looks like I've got this backwards because this should um, this should slide freely so I'm gonna take this apart again flip this over and put it back together and um, I'll show you how much smoother this contraption is See how that slides? That's what it's supposed to do. So, like I said, all I had to do is flip over this uh, this thing in the back because, like I said, it's not this center hole is not in line with these two holes, so it was causing some racking. And now it's good. So the only thing that is not done on this is I need some wood jaws, um, soft jaws in here. So when you clamp your workpiece, you don't leave uh, marks from the steel or the iron in that. So I need to make a pair of those. And I have this, what I assume is an original um, wood handle that is missing one end. Um, I am not a, a woodworker, like a wood carver. I don't have a, a wood lathe or anything like that, so I'm not sure how I'm going to fix this. Um, I may look online to see if I can order a replacement handle um, altogether. I think this is about a one inch diameter handle. Um, but the original one is good for now until I can figure out how I'm going to fix that. But there it is Richards Wilcox. Aurora, Illinois. In case you're wondering, it's nine and seven eighths inches wide, and the pad or the jaw depth is four and a half inches. And let's see how wide it'll open. I don't know that. So imagine. Um, an inch and a half for uh, soft jaws, one on each side, so that's three quarter inches either side. Uh, so that's an inch and a half. So that's 12, 12 and a quarter inches. So you take uh, an inch and a half, it's 10 and three quarter um, inch jaw capacity, um, which is pretty nice. And of course, it's got the slide up dog here, so you can, uh, if you have another bench dog, you can clamp a, a piece of uh, you can clamp a piece of wood um, side from the side, and you can plane uh, across the top. So that's pretty cool. It says zero three seven seven right here. Use no oil on screw, and somewhere. 
and over here it says it's stamped 232. So I'll give you guys a, a, a pan. I'll pan over with the camera here uh, so you guys can see what I'm talking about. So there you can see no oil on screw. Focus. Two three two. And here's here's that split nut. So as you rotate the handle one way or the other, it spins around and that little nub on the other end flips flip, it flips open like this. And so now, this part, this is the only uh, tooth set in this nut. And so without this engaging on that, this can slide freely. And then when you turn the handle to tighten it, it flips over because of this counterweight on this side. Flips over, and these two tabs here catch on this bar and it clamps down and engages those teeth on the threads, allowing you to, uh, to tighten. So that's that. And there again it says 0377. So I don't know if that's, I have no idea what the significance of that 0377 means. So if anyone knows uh, anything about these old vices, I would love to know. Please leave a comment. And here again, here's that little slide up dog. This one's damaged. It looks cracked there, but that's all right. So a pretty good score. I'm pretty happy. I won't tell you what I paid for it you'll be jealous. Uh, but if you stuck around this long and you enjoyed watching this, uh, consider subscribing because I do have another video coming up um, eventually where I'll uh, do the same process, maybe a little different. Down here, I have Apprentice 336W Vice. It says Prentice Vice, Meridian, Connecticut, USA. And uh, this is another quick release vice. It's pretty cool. Um, this one has like a blue paint on it. I don't know if that's original or not. But I'm gonna strip this one down, take it all apart, clean it up. And uh, if you are like me and find this stuff interesting, subscribe. I'd appreciate it. Thanks for watching. One last parting shot.